All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to bring all those lessons together into this final lesson where we, I show you how to identify the profit maximizing quantity and price. And remember what I said at the very beginning, this is the goal of the business to decide how much should we produce and what price should we charge. And those two decisions are what is going to decide whether a business is going to achieve its maximum possible profit. Now, the first thing I want you to do in order to get, get into understanding this is I want you to go back to your table and you'll notice that there are four more lines on that table that we have not completed. They have bits of information put in them, but what I want you to do now is I want you to try and complete the last four rows of that table and then we're going to use that information to understand how a business identifies the profit maximizing quantity and price. All right, let's go ahead and try and finish up this uh, table as best we can. Um, so we've got uh, four more lines, one, two, three, four more lines. We're going to try and complete them all the way across. Why don't you uh, pause this video, try to find out as many of them as you can, or see if, if you can, then complete the whole table, and then you can watch the rest of this as I complete it. All right, and that is the whole table. Uh, you may want to pause it right now and then uh, and check your answers. So now what I've done is I've brought over five of the variables from the table that we just completed. Quantity and price, profit, marginal revenue, and marginal cost. Now here's what I want you to do. Look at all these numbers. What quantity and what price would give this firm the highest level of profit. At first, as quantity goes up, profit is increasing, right? But then when it gets up to 283, any quantity higher than this, as we go up to 46, 47, and 48, what happens to the profit? The profit actually starts decreasing. And that is a phenomenon in business, that there is usually a quantity that is ideal for getting the most profit. Now you can see that in this case there are actually two quantities because we have a we, at a quantity of 44 we have three, 283 profit and at a quantity of 45 we also have 283 profit. Now here's the argument I'm going to make between those two. If I have a business and I can have 44 of my products out there or 45 of my products out there, 
I would rather have 45 of my products out there because I was able to employ people, I have more people who are satisfied, and I'm getting the exact same amount of profit. And so here's what I'm going to say. I'm going to say in this particular case that 45, because remember our question from the beginning was what quantity should we produce to maximize our profit? And here is the answer to that question. In this situation, our answer is 45. The profit maximizing quantity here is 45. It gives us profit, the highest level of profit at 283. And the price that we should charge is the price that goes along with that quantity, which is $53. And now here is the argument that I'm gonna make. I want you to now, along that line, come over to marginal revenue and marginal cost. And I want you to look at marginal revenue and marginal cost at a quantity of 45 and notice that there's something very interesting about marginal revenue and marginal cost at that quantity. Do you see it? What is interesting about marginal revenue and marginal cost at a quantity of 45? That's right. They are the same number. They are equal to each other. And so now here's the argument that I want to make. I want to make an argument that the ideal quantity, that the profit maximizing quantity, so we're going to say Q profit max, I'm going to say the profit maximizing quantity occurs when marginal revenue is equal to marginal cost. That is what we call the profit maximizing rule. And I'm going to put that on the board in just a couple minutes. Okay. But first, you don't have to just accept it from me. I'm going to prove it to you mathematically. Okay. So watch this. Let's go down to a, a quantity of 40 and 41. Okay. At a quantity of 40, our profit is $280, right? And as we go from 40 to 41, our marginal revenue is $51.20. And 20 cents. I'm going to write that down. So marginal revenue is $51 and 20 cents. And our marginal cost is $50. So the question here is this, should we produce the 41st unit? So this is at a quantity of 41, 41, 41, at a quantity of 41, should we produce quantity 41. We're at 40 and all we're asking ourselves is should we make one more and go up to 41? Well here's what this is saying. This is saying that we will add to our revenue 5120 and we will add to our costs $50. Well if we subtract these two, if we do marginal revenue minus marginal cost, here we will net a dollar twenty. We will go up by a dollar twenty. So the question is this: Should we produce one more if that means we're going to get another dollar twenty? And a rational person would say yes. A free one dollar and twenty cents is better than not having the dollar twenty. So we're going to go ahead and produce and go up to forty one. Now we have to ask the same question when we go from forty one to forty two. Well. Going up to 42, our marginal revenue is 51.10 and our marginal cost is 50.20. If we subtract these, the difference between them is 90 cents. We get another 90 cents. So should we produce the 42nd unit and get a free 90 cents? I say free, I don't mean free, but you know what I mean. Get another 90 cents. And the answer to that is yes. So what is the quality of marginal revenue and marginal cost? As we keep saying yes, keep producing, you can see that marginal revenue is greater than marginal cost. So as long as marginal revenue is greater than marginal cost, we should keep producing. We should keep making another one because it's going to add on to our profit. But now let's go down here to a quantity of 47. We're going to go from 46 to 47. So let's say 47, 47, okay? What is the marginal revenue associated with the 47th unit, okay? Marginal revenue is $50.60. Marginal cost is $51.20. So 
So now if we subtract them, if we do marginal revenue 5060 minus 5120, we have a negative, negative 60 cents. So if we produce the 47th unit, we will actually lose money. We will lose 60 cents. Our profit will go down by 60 cents. And you can see that down here because we are going from 282.70 down to 282.20. Can you see the difference there? It's going down by 60 cents. Do we want our profit to go down by 60 cents? The answer is no. So should we produce the 47th unit? No, we should not. That's a bad idea. And down here, that's going to keep happening as long as marginal revenue is less than marginal cost. So as long as marginal revenue is greater than marginal cost, we say yes, produce more. As long as marginal revenue is less than marginal cost, we say no, don't produce more. So where is the in-between point between greater than and less than? And that is at equal to. Whenever marginal revenue is equal to marginal cost, that is the profit maximizing quantity that will always result in the maximum profit for the business. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to write down what we call the profit maximization rule. So here's the profit maximization rule for microeconomics for firms. Produce the quantity where marginal revenue is equal to marginal cost. Very simple. And we call that quantity, we call it the profit maximizing quantity. We're going to be using that phrase a lot in this class. I'm going to say, well, at the profit maximizing quantity. And once we find the profit maximizing quantity, we can then do this. But remember our second question. Our first question was what quantity should we produce? And our second question is what price should we charge? And the price that you're going to charge, this profit maximizing quantity, once we choose our quantity, that automatically chooses our price for us. And that gives us what's called the profit maximizing price. So we'll say, look, this is the profit maximizing quantity. This is the profit maximizing price. And then what you can do is you can multiply the profit maximizing quantity times the profit maximizing price, and that would give you the total revenue that you need to achieve in order to maximize your profit. Okay? All right, well, that is it for profit maximization. And now what we're going to move on to in the next lesson is what we call break even analysis.